This is AQA Psychology, um, and this is the psychodynamic explanation of gender development. Um, and we're just going to look at the description of this explanation in this video and not the evaluation. So for those who haven't done the psychodynamic approach yet, here's a quick in a nutshell outline of what it is. Uh, it was developed by Freud um, and it has four basic ideas behind it. Firstly, that our behaviour is uh, very heavily influenced by our unconscious mind, which is a part of our mind which we can't access and which we're not aware of. Secondly, that our personality is made up of three distinct components, the id, the superego and the ego. And the three of those have different roles and sort of war against each other. The third idea uh, within the psychodynamic approach is defence mechanisms. Um, and this is where we um, have, where we, f where we can't find a good way of resolving um, conflict or anxiety. Our mind basically uses a defence mechanism, which is a coping strategy, uh, which uh, helps us to de deal with the anxiety, but perhaps distorts reality in some way, uh, such as if we have a really traumatic event. We, it's uh, repressed, you might have heard of repressed memories, uh, it may be repressed so pushed into our unconscious mind where we can't access it so we've completely forgotten it, so it's like it didn't happen, i.e. it's distorting reality in some way, that's an example of that. Um, and the last um, part of the psychodynamic approach is the psychosexual stages of development that Freud put forward um, and uh, we'll do a bit more detail about those in a minute. Okay, so before we go to that, here's just a little bit more detail about the three parts of the personality. Uh, this is the theory that, that Freud put forward, that per the personality has three parts. The id, the first part, I, I thought this was quite a nice cartoon. It's I didn't make it, obviously, um, but it, it, I like the cartoon figures because it's quite a nice way to remember this. The id is our kind of the devil part of our personality. It, it wants instant gratification. It wants to... It, it wants pleasure, it, it drives us to try and get pleasure, it demands gratification. Um, that's sort of balanced out by the superego, which is kind of like the angel part, um, and it's our uh, kind of like our conscience or our morality. Um, it tries to, um, tries to tell us to do the right thing. And then the ego, um, basically, uh, kind of mediates between the two and helps with planning and helps um, to balance the, the two of them out and to resolve conflict. Um, then these are the psychosexual stages of development that Freud put forward that everyone goes through. And this is one of his most controversial ideas that everyone is born with a basic sexual instinct right from birth and that as we go through development um, we sort of go through different stages of development of that sexual desire um, and that it's focused on different areas of our body as we grow older. So, for example, the oral stage, uh, the focus is mouth, tongue, lips, babies suck everything and put everything to their mouths. So that's the idea there. Um, and the stage that we're really interested in in terms of gender is, is the phallic stage, which is... Um, which is where our gender identity develops, according to Freud, when we resolve a critical conflict. So we're going to look today at basically what what is that conflict and how is it resolved. So the idea here is that we have a critical conflict, which is different depending on if we're a boy or a girl. Um, we um, then, in order to resolve that conflict, we identify with the same sex parent. So if we're a girl, we identify with our mother. And then as as part of that process, we then internalise our gender. So that's that's how Freud thinks we develop a gender identity. OK, here's the, the first of the two critical conflicts, the Oedipus complex. This is the stages that boys go through, according to Freud, um, as part of their... Um, gender development. So the Oedipus complex is where boys sexually desire their mother. Remember this is around the age of three as part of the phallic stage. Their father is then seen as a love rival because they're sexually desiring their mother and that leads them to be jealous and really hostile towards their father. 
However, at the same time, the boys the boy fears his father because the father is more powerful than he is, um, and he's afraid that he will be castrated. That's called ca castration anxiety. Afraid that his father will discover his desires for his mother and castrate him. Um, so that's the big conflict and anxiety that's created as a result of that that needs resolving in order to develop a healthy gender identity. Okay, for girls then, it's sort of the opposite. Um, the Electra complex. Girls realise they have no penis um, and assume they've been castrated and blame the mother. And they have penis envy. They then um, desire their father because he has a penis and then equally develop jealousy and hostility towards their mother. So you can see, although the reasoning is slightly different, it's the same concept. They desire the opposite sex parent and then develop jealousy and hostility towards the same sex parent. Um, and then they're afraid, again, similar to uh, the Oedipus complex, she's afraid that she will lose her mother's love by competing for her father. So that's where the anxiety um, comes in that needs resolving. So those are the two big conflicts that need uh, resolving in order to develop a gender identity. So the complex in both cases is then resolved by the child identifying with their same sex parent. So they would adopt characteristics, um, attitudes and values from that parent. Um, so if they're a girl, they would identify with their mother and then they would adopt characteristics including femininity from their mother. And then as they adopt all of these things into their personality, that's called internalisation because they're adopting them and they're keeping them for themselves. And then this forms the basis for their own gender identity because as part of adopting all of those different things, they're adopting femininity from their mother, they're adopting that into their personality and internalising it. Uh, if you think back to your social influence, internalisation, uh, a permanent change, um, which then forms the basis for their own gender identity. Same process for a boy, and you're talking about the boy Id identifying with their father um, and adopting masculinity um, as some of the characteristics from their father. So that's basically how it happens. Um, Freud also put forward um, a case study called the case study of little hands um, as part of this theory in order to sort of support um, or provide some evidence for it. Um, and it's a very lengthy case study, but in, in brief, um, little hands had a phobia of horses. Um, and actually particularly horses with black bits around their mouths um, which Freud said was related to um, his father having a moustache um, and Freud interpreted his phobia of horses as being due to a repressed fear of his father as part of that Oedipus complex rather than um, internalising it he had um, uh, identifying with his father he'd um, repressed that fear as a, a bit of a defence mechanism. And the horse was symbolising his father and the, the fear of being bitten, which was, was what he had as part of his phobia, showed castration anxiety. So he's putting this, this um, case study um, of this little boy and his horse phobia forward as evidence of this um, Oedipus complex. Um, and equally, he, the little Hans was jealous of his baby sister, showing he wanted his mother to himself, relating to the whole desire for his mother thing as part of the Oedipus complex. So this that's the evidence, basically, that Freud put forward. And we'll look at that case study probably in a bit more detail in the lesson. Um, but that that's the evidence that, that Freud put forward to support his theory. Obviously, it's a very complex theory and it relates to the unconscious mind. So it's very difficult to actually find evidence for it. But that's what we have. And we'll look at whether that's good support or not in the lesson.